Okay, so today is a nice short lesson actually. So we're going to focus. And if you have a question, you can put up your hand. But so the first thing we're going to do is jump right to example number one. Okay. So example number one says a graph of a quadratic equation or function has a vertex of negative two and eight. So what I'd like you to do is go into this little graph area here and plot negative two and eight. So it's going to be like right about there. Okay, and then it says it also passes through the point negative one and seven, which is right about there. So we can guess that our graph will look something kind of like this, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's the general shape and position of our graph. So what we're going to be learning in this unit is that using these two points, the vertex, and another point anywhere on the graph, we can come up with the entire equation. So we have our basic equation here, but we want to rewrite it in our form that we like so much. So. Okay, and so I'm going to put the A right here, but, yeah, but I'm going to say it's the reciprocal. So you can write it as 1 over A. I'm just going to write it as A, but then have that note that says it's the reciprocal, okay? Thank you. I'm glad you think it's acceptable. Okay, so we know that from our lesson on Wednesday that our vertex is our P and Q you remember that. So we can write that right there. And we can plug these right into our equation. So we're going to go a y minus there. Hang on tight, Lucas. Just, you're jumping the gun. <laughs> okay, so we have y minus 8. And then on the other side, we're going to have x minus negative 2 squared. Okay. So from here, we're just going to simplify it a little bit and clean it up. So we'll go y minus 8. And then on this side, we'll have x plus 2 squared. Okay. So we don't quite have our equation figured out yet because we still have this a. So what we can do to find that but we have to find our a first, right? We don't know what our stretch is. So they gave us this extra point, so we know that this is x and y, and we can substitute these in for x and y. So we'll go a7 minus 8 is equal to negative 1 plus 2 squared. And then we can simplify it and solve for a. We'll go a, 7 minus 8 is negative 1, is equal to 1 squared. So we'll go a minus 1 is equal to 1. And to get a by itself, we divide both sides by negative 1, and we get a is equal to negative 1. So Yes, Josh. In the 1 over a form, then you would have to solve for a, right? So it would be like, yeah. So in this one, this example is kind of tricky because it doesn't matter that it's the reciprocal because it's negative 1, right? But in another example we'll do, we'll see how you have to flip it. Okay? So then we know that our equation is... Uh, negative 1, y minus 8 is equal to x plus 2 squared. And as our final answer, we always want it in that y equals form. So we'll multiply both sides by negative 1. 
or sorry, divide both sides by negative 1. Okay. So we get y minus 8 is equal to negative cosine squared. And then we get y is equal to negative x plus 2 squared plus 8. And that's the final answer. Okay. So it's a pretty nice little trick that to find the equation, all you need to know is the vertex and one other point. Okay. And then the next part, they ask us to rewrite the equation in general form. So remember, that's this form, the one we're kind of used to seeing all the time. And so to do that, we'll start with y is equal to negative 2 squared plus 8. And then all we do is we FOIL it out, and then we simplify it. So we'll start with the FOILing. x plus 2 squared is x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2. And then we FOIL, so we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So the trickiest part of this question is we have to make sure that we distribute that negative sign to everything inside the brackets. So we'll get y is equal to negative x squared minus 4x minus 4 plus 8. And so our final answer, negative x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, so we now have two equations, this one and this one, that show us the exact same thing. Okay, so these are equal to each other. And so for part C, they ask us to use a graphing calculator to sketch the graph and determine the x and y intercepts. So you can make your y1 equal to either one of these graphs, whichever one you prefer to work with, for y1 equals negative x plus 2 squared plus 8. Okay? So I'll put my graphing calculator, and I'll do just that. Oh, look, I already have it in. It's like I've done this before. So I'm going to make my y2 0 because I like to use the intercept method. Stop that. <laughs> So we'll go second trace, second trace, intercept, enter, enter, enter. So we know that one of the x-intercepts is there. So I go second trace, intercept, five. And then I'll find the other one. So to find the other one, remember you have to scroll the little spider blinker all the way over to the other one. Yeah, just close. And you get negative 4, 8 squared. Okay. Okay. And then to find the y-intercept, So you're right, Kelsey, they said to the nearest hundredth, so you would round it to 0.83. Okay. So to find the y-intercept in our calculator, that's when you go second trace 1 for value, and then x is equal to 0. And we find that the y-intercept is 4. But we know a quicker way to find that by looking at our general equation, right? So it's always what's left at the end, which is 4 in our general equation. So, Josh, that's where the trick is, right? You have to be looking at that general equation, not at the standard form. Okay? So let's move on to example 2. Mm -hmm. So now they're asking us to find the x and y intercepts, but to find them algebraically, so without our calculators. 
So this would be like a good long answer question on a test. So if you were to use your calculator and not show any work, you'd get one mark out of three. So you wouldn't even pass the question. Yeah. Okay, so if we're looking for the x-intercept, what we have to do is we make y equal to 0, right? So then we go to just go 0 is equal to 3, x minus 1 squared minus 9. And then we just solve for x, so we go, okay, plus 9 on each side. 9 is equal to 3 x minus 1 squared. And then we divide both sides by 3. We get 3 is equal to x minus 1 squared. And then we get to take the square root of both sides like this. So the one thing that's really tricky to remember is that when we take the square root of 3, the result is plus or minus the square root of 3, right? Because even if it was negatives, when you square it, it would become positive 3. x minus 1. And then you just add 1 to both sides. And so we get 1 plus or minus square root of 3 is equal to x. So we have our two y-intercepts. x is equal to 1 plus the square root of 3 and x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 3. So you can write it like this, or you can write it like this. Both are acceptable. Okay? And then so to find our y-intercept, can someone put up their hand and remind me what we do? Justin? So that's how you would do it if you were doing it graphically, but algebraically, what would we do? Okay. Josh? Exactly. So you go x is equal to 0, which is when you're doing it graphically is exactly what you're telling your calculator to do, right? You go value x equal to 0. Then we get to go y is equal to 3. 0 minus 1 squared minus 9, and then you just solve it again. So we get our y intercept is equal to negative 6. And just a reminder, if it says exact values, that means if you get any fractions or radicals like we have here, you want to keep it as those. Okay? So you don't want to write it in decimal. Okay. So for example number three, it's a lot like example number one, except they already have our points plotted on the graph for us, so we don't have to plot them and draw like a sketch of it or anything like that. So the first question is to find the equation. So we'll write it in that form we love. And I'm going to read the A here. And I'm going to leave a note for myself that says reciprocal. Okay, and then so we know our vertex here, and so we know that this is our P, and this is our Q, so we can go 2, negative 1, just like that. And so after I sub in the vertex, you do want to simplify it a little bit. So go a, y minus 2 is equal to x plus 1 squared. And then we have our other point. 
So we know that our negative 3 and 1 can be substituted in for x and y. So the 1, negative 3. Okay, and then we can continue to simplify it. So 1. So at the end, I have a is equal to negative 4, but I have to remember that we need to flip it to make it the reciprocal, right? So when we write it in our equation, we want to write it as, or I guess when we write it in our equation, we can still write it as negative 4, y minus 2 is equal to x plus 1 squared, and then when we put it into y equals, it will become the reciprocal. So, but looks like that negative 4, y minus 2 is equal to plus 2, plus 2. And I use them right here. This is where x and y got subbed in. Oh, in this equation? Because when we have that equation, we want it to be able to use any x and y on the graph for it. Okay, so we know that our p and q stay in because our vertex is equal to these points. But we want to be able to take this equation. So the next question I could ask you would be like, what is it when x is equal to 5? And then you could just put it in and find it. Okay? So, so then they ask us to find the x and y intercepts. So if we're looking for the x intercept, what do I make 0? Y. So if we were doing this question, and instead of giving you this point, they said, oh, the x intercept is negative 4. How would you know what your y is? So if they give you an x-intercept, your y is 0. If they give you a y-intercept, you know your x is 0. So keep that in mind for the homework. Hint, hint. Okay, so then we just get to solve for x. So we go, okay, minus 2 from both sides. And then we'll multiply both sides by negative 4. So these cancel out. I'm just going to put this up here. Okay. And we square both sides, just take the square root of both sides. Okay. And then remember, we want it as a plus or minus. And we'll subtract one from both sides. Okay. So, is this in its simplest form? Think back a couple units. Okay. So we can still simplify this to be two root two. So on a multiple choice, this is how the answer would be. And on a long answer, that's what we'd be looking for as well, because you guys have done your radicals unit. So we know that x is equal to 2 root 2 minus 1, and x is equal to negative 2 root 2 minus 1. Yep. And then for the y-intercepts, what do we make zero? 
you got it. So these ones are a little bit easier. So we get one negative one quarter, one plus two. And because it's nice to keep things in exact values, we know that 2 is equal to 8 over 4. So we can go y is equal to 1 over 4 plus 8 over 4, and y is equal to 7 over 4. Okay. Is this making sense to everyone? Lucas, has your question from before been answered? Okay, good. So then the last part of this question, they just ask you to state the domain, range, and equation of the axis of symmetry. So if we remember the domain is where all of the x's are, so what would we say our domain is? If we look at our graph. Where all of our x's. Yeah, so... You can see that we could continue this forever, and our graph would continue forever as well. So we know that x is all real numbers. And then for the range, that's where all y is. So can I have someone put up their hand and tell me where all the y's are? Okay. So Josh has his hand up, so I'll call on him. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So y is less than or equal to 2. So that's awesome that you remembered the or equal to, because that's the one everyone always forgets. And then we also say that y is a real number. Okay. And the last thing they ask for is the equation of the axis of symmetry. So you'll remember that's where you can split the graph in half. And so the equation of our axis of symmetry is always, not that, is always equal to the x of our vertex. So we say that the equation of the axis of symmetry is equal to x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so that is lesson number four. So for homework today, one to six, and there's lots of time to finish it so you can have the entire weekend without any math.